Hi, I'm Stuart McKelly Naylor from the University of Suffolk, and this will be a quick talk on my research into the experience of undergraduate biomechanics students who've been involved in publishing their research. So there's a lot of research out there, not specifically in biomechanics, but promoting the benefits of involving or integrating teaching and research. And various different models and frameworks have been used to study this. But one of the most commonly used has been Healy's research teaching nexus. So he's really identified four main ways that teaching and research can be integrated, splitting them up along two axes. We've got whether the students are participating in the research or simply an audience, and then whether the emphasis is on the research content or on the processes and problems involved in the research. And for the purposes of today, I'm going to focus on this top right quadrant of research-based teaching, which is where the curriculum emphasises inquiry-based learning, i.e. learning through actually conducting research. And this so says current research into the experiences of students involved in research um, but it's been largely anecdotal. So, for example, there's a special issue of Frontiers in Psychology last year um, looking at, yeah, experiences of undergrads. But it's mainly anecdotal and largely, for example, from the perspectives of staff saying, this is what I do in my institution and this is what I think does or doesn't work. So there's not much quantitative evidence out there and especially not within specific disciplines such as biomechanics. So the aim of this study was to investigate student experiences of publishing undergraduate research, specifically within biomechanics. And to do that, I managed to recruit 29 participants who had published um, research within biomechanics that was conducted at least partly while they were undergraduate students. They all carried out an online survey, um, which I adapted from a couple of previous studies in different disciplines. So the survey was made up of three parts, which I'll go through now. The first one looked to tease out the areas in which the students felt they'd, or where they perceived the greatest benefits from their involvement. So the questions were, has your undergraduate research been helpful in improving your, and as you can see, the questions range from ability to work independently through to specific skills, such as statistical analysis skills or written communication skills. And in each one, the participants rated from not at all helpful through to extremely helpful. Second section was the student's level of involvement. So this was rate your involvement specifically relating to the final published work. And I tried to span each step of the research process from reading relevant literature through to preparing the final report. And on each one, answers ranged from my supervisor or others did all of the work through to I did all of the work with various options in between. There was a third section which was narrative exploration. So a series of open-ended questions where participants were free to type their response or any additional comments. Um, and these have been analysed um, qualitatively, but that analysis doesn't form part of this study presented today. So hopefully that will be out quite soon. Um, and yeah, that provides a lot of really interesting responses behind why some of these responses here that I'm showing today were reported. So to jump into the results, the perceived benefits, I'll pull out the main highlights, but the areas where students perceived the greatest benefits were their ability to work independently, their understanding of the research process, and their sense of accomplishment. And the areas where they perceived the least benefits were collaborating with other researchers, critically evaluating methods in the literature, and statistical analysis skills. 
But it's worth noting that on average, participants perceived benefits in all 16 areas as at least largely helpful on average. So these red areas aren't necessarily saying it wasn't very helpful, just that it's less helpful than some of the other areas. And the single greatest reported benefit was in understanding of the research process, whereas the single least reported benefit was in statistical analysis skills. Moving on to level of involvement, the greatest involvement was in reading the scientific literature, recruiting participants and analysing data, whereas the least involvement was in designing the methods or hypotheses of the study. And then the greatest of all was in reading the scientific literature, where it's worth noting that not a single participant felt that their supervisor had done more reading than they had um, for the paper. Okay, so just a quick summary really of these results. They say on average, largely helpful or greater in all areas linked to various different intended learning outcomes. And this supports the use of research-based teaching for achieving many of those outcomes ranging from broad to quite specific outcomes. Greatest benefits were in general concepts, such as understanding the research process or a sense of accomplishment, whereas the least benefit was in specific skills, such as statistical analysis. Um, perhaps due to the relatively narrow range of techniques used in a single research project, where a single statistical test might be used, or um, a narrow range of analysis might be repeated over and over again. Again, perhaps due to the nature of student projects, it was more beneficial for independent skills rather than collaborative skills. The greatest involvement of students was in time-consuming aspects of reading papers, recruiting participants, and analysing data, whereas the lowest level was in what I'd call critical design stages of designing the methodology and the hypotheses to be tested. Overall, it provides some early support um, for the student as scholar model with inquiry-based learning. So trying to transition pedagogically from telling students what they need to know through to encouraging them to seek and discover new knowledge through research. And maybe some early suggestions that it might be beneficial to use formative and summative processes that actually replicate the publishing process so that all students can benefit from the publishing research kind of structure. Um, so this could be things like undergraduate research journals, student research conferences or exhibitions, whether internal or external. And if you're interested in how you can maybe apply or expand upon student research, um, this work here on screen has a series of case studies at both a departmental and institutional level. Next steps, as I mentioned, section three, the open-ended responses. Um, the analysis isn't available yet, so hopefully that will be out soon, but I've included a few quotes on screen. And there's also some more negative comments relating to the publish or perish nature and also the quality of academic research um, when students are involved. So again, just trying to balance out the pros and cons of this. Um, but yeah, some really interesting perspectives of the students there. If you want to read more, then the abstract um, or mini paper will be available on the ISBS archive if it's not linked below the video. And I'll also make sure that it's available on ResearchGate as well. Thank you for listening.